Welcome back to another episode of So Glad We're Friends. I'm Maggie. I'm Devin. I'm Brittany. So today we're taking a personality quiz. Oh yeah, we're taking personality quiz. I'm really excited because honestly, I don't think I've ever taken the Myers-Briggs test. You haven't? I don't think I so. I think we should do Enneagram because oh, we're doing Myers-Briggs is going to be too long and like... Oh. Because the one that you sent me was over 100 or like 100 questions. What? Oh, what? It said 20 minutes. It said 100. Well, probably because you like go through quickly, but we're going to be discussing each question. So I feel like that would not be possible. Oh, yeah. This literally said less than 20 minutes. So I thought it was like short. But we are, we got this idea from another podcast called Good Influences. And they talked about this. They said that Myers-Briggs is just like too... And like they had a good reason for why they were doing Enneagram. So I think we should just do Enneagram as well. <laughs> I feel like Enneagram too is just like easier to understand. Like I don't yeah, understand it's like, all the letters. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what they were saying. I yeah, agree. It's just a lot. I also like Enneagram because I think it's more like both of them are like personality based, but I feel like with Myers Briggs, it is kind of more focused in a work setting. So it's, like, helpful for, like, totally. how you work with people and, like, your style of, like, relationships and, like, how you interact with people. But Enneagram, I feel like, has a little bit more to it. Oh, interesting. Also, I haven't taken the Enneagram one in, like, at least five years. So I wonder if it'll be different than, like, what I thought before. Yeah. Mine has changed since becoming an influencer. Really? Because I, I used to have really no work motivation because I wasn't passionate about my work. And now yeah. I'm, like very work oriented interesting so i guess we'll see i'm gonna try to be as honest as possible and i think talking them through with you guys will help me be more honest so yeah Yeah, i love that Mm -hmm. um we're using the sorry go ahead i was gonna say the other test i'm like literally blanking on it it's like by human design no it's another one it's like like a gallup Gallup. um it's Strengths Finder, I think. That's what it is. That one I think is really well done too. And I think like people before they enter the job force should take Strength Finders because it really helps to make sure that you're like aligning with the type of like job responsibilities and like what you're passionate and excited about. Similar to what you just said, Devin, of like you weren't passionate about the work that you were doing. So it's like hard to be motivated. And a lot of organizations will like use Strength Finders to like shift people in the different jobs or like help them like go into like a new that's smart like vertical within a company or like if you're in leadership and you're like not meant to be in leadership like shifting into more like an independent role so you know what my boss used to do I don't know if we talked about this but he would give his personality quiz to anyone who was interviewing and was like okay study my personality type what do you mean so he'd give his um not the, the he'd give his Myers Briggs results to people applying and interviewing for the position and he was like this is how I work best so yeah. I want to make sure you work best with me rather than like vice I versa I love that actually that No cool. I feel like Are that you, were is you supposed so... to take it though yourself or like you're yeah, just looking he would at make his them results take it like... too I think oh, okay. he would make them take it too but like I don't know it was just very I feel almost like narcissistic like I well he should be more focused on how they work best well right a boss should be more focused on how his employees are motivated I almost feel like it's like a a love language thing you're like hey this is my love language or like this is how I work so like just so you because like I think and I also think it kind of encourages people to like interview him more than like just solely being like please give me this job type of thing because one yeah, of the things that I, I think about should be with, talked like, my about, mom or something, and she thought it was weird, but I guess not. But like, it's think... weird if they if he was like so stingy on how the test results were. <laughs> like, if yeah, he's like, no, we don't match. You're no, fired. I don't think he was. But like, if he, I think it, there's a way that it probably has to like be approached. Like, it couldn't be like this is really important to me. I feel like it's like, hey, <laughs> this could be helpful. Like, just information for you to review. But if he was doing like study this, then like make sure we're compatible i feel like that's kind of an awkward thing to say 
Yeah, weird. Um, so we're using the website crystalnose.com if you want to follow along with us and take the test. Did you um, drop it in the chat or in our text message? Uh, yeah, Devin sent, sent it. Um, oh, yeah, but we're just going to take turns going through each of the questions and discussing them. I have hair all over my face. Yeah, so, okay, so we are trying something else with the podcast out. So we wanted to, like, introduce the episode at the top so that you guys knew what the episode was even about. But also, I want to know how you guys are doing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you want to go back first? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Run it back. <laughs> Before we jump into the test, <laughs> is there anything new? Oh, I finished that book <gasps> that you recommended, Britt. How did you like it? I really liked it. I oh, recommended so it on my Instagram account. Yeah, it was Did so you good. start I, the next one? The other one? I have another physical book that I'm going to read. So I'm like switching back yeah. and forth because I bought a bunch of physical books before I got my Kindle. Wait, yeah. is this the one that you just rated a four? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it wasn't a five, but you really loved it. It wasn't – so, like, <laughs> I reserved the fives for my life-changing books, like, the books I that, feel. like, made me change my mindset or made me cry or, you know. I so it was really good, but I rated it a four. <laughs> it's I would have rated it a nine out of whole- ten, probably. <laughs> yeah. My my fives. But it's I honestly think a scale of one to ten is just so much better than to five. Like, there's just too much yeah. variable on a five. So. That is a very good point. Because like a, you're like people would be happy with an eight, nine, or ten. Exactly. Probably even like a seven. Exactly. But to have a four is like eighty percent already. Exactly. Right? Like imagine if you were getting graded like for school on that scale. Yeah. That would not work. Yeah. That's a very good. But point. I like we should the, tell good um, reason second to person it. perspective of the Sabrina character. Yeah. It gave were you me shocked Joe by from you vibes. I like because he's like, always like hello you and like how he talks to them. In I don't person. like that. I could not get it into made her you. Creepy. Yeah, she was creepy. She was like a stalker, obsessed yeah. with this other girl. Lesbian and yeah, there were a lot of shocking. No, because she, the other girl was dating her ex boyfriend, and she was obsessed with her ex boyfriend. So she was like obsessed with the girl. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's such a weird, like, twist. There were a turn. few big twists. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I but love it, was it good. though. It's so good. The You're going to love the – if you like the style of that book, you're going to love the Too Good to Be True. Like, it's okay. so – it's so juicy. And, like, I just I, – I, I keep – but here's – actually, here's, here's a question I wanted to ask you guys. So when you're reading – books and you're like oh I want to find something similar to this book have you ever like read like almost the exact same plot line and you're like oh I actually didn't really want to read the identical Mm, book no I usually go with the same author if I want something similar I never look up like the plot but that's very interesting interesting. because there's two books that I read that very similar like style and plot and like things and they obviously had different like twists and turns but I was like I actually you know don't want to read the exact same book back to back like it'd be fine if i read it in you know you know like a week or two but um (laughs) it's still so short (laughs) uh but i don't want to read them back to back because i've done that a couple times now because you know like when they do like the recommended ones of like similar types of books i would just get so confused like wait what book am i even reading (laughs) yeah i like that idea of like going with the same author though to get similar style yeah yeah i've still been off my reading journey i mean kind (laughs) of i'm still reading it starts with us but i'm like halfway through now so i'm making progress but i'm just like there's too much good tv on right now and i'm into yellowstone sadly Mm. i finished kaleidoscope oh did you like it It it's good yeah i liked it i saw it's funny because i like some episodes better than other episodes for sure like i really loved the one where his daughter was little me too that was a good one and i loved the escaping jail one too yeah that was the first one i watched oh. i really liked that because like it sets you up for the relationship with the two guys oh interesting and you're also kind of like okay what 
is going. I don't know. I liked starting with that one. Yeah. Oh, cool. I feel like this might be a good one for me and Joe to try watching together. Yeah, yeah it's you cool. guys would like it together. Um, did you I start that like, 90s show? No, no, I didn't even watch that 70s <gasps> show. What? What channel is it on? It's on Netflix. You didn't watch that 70s show? Uh-uh. No. Maybe I will. I am shook. That's like probably like in my top two of like all time favorite like series. Oh, of like you really? can just rewatch it. It's on Netflix again. now? Yeah, but the 70s that seventy show, they took it off of Netflix, but I think it's on like oh. Peacock or something. That's so weird that they would have that nineties show know. and not have and they That's took it weird. off like pretty recently too. But yeah, definitely don't watch that 90s show, I guess, until yeah. you watch that 70s show. But it was yeah. so cute. Like we watched part of it and it has like the exact same humor and everything. And yeah. it's just so cool that they kept it similar. Is it same characters? Or um, same actors? They come like back, like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher and stuff are in like the first episode and then their kid is like the main character. So it's really? like all the Fuller main House. people. Yeah, it's like all of the main people's kids are the main characters. And then the other people are like guest stars. And the kids are living with the grandparents. So then like uh Red and Kitty are the parents that are now the grandparents. And the girls staying in their house for like the summer. Wait, so it's, isn't like, it crazy premise. that like their kids all became actors? No, they're not their real kids. Oh. <laughs> the characters, characters, children. All of their kids came back, and I was like, "That's so you're like coincidental shit. that like all of their kids became actors." I feel like that's not very <laughs> common. <laughs> that wouldn't be it's the, that. the fictional characters' children. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm almost caught up on Yellowstone. We're on season five, so we really only got a couple more episodes, and we're all caught up. How do you feel wow. about Beth? Okay, my mom freaking loves Beth and what? preaches Beth all the time. She's like, "Don't you love Beth?" And like, I understand. I I love her how strong she is, and she's like a great female character. And I love like some of the things she says to stick up to people. But like, she makes every wrong decision in life she <laughs> does the worst case scenario for That's every so possible thing she could do she's like what would make this situation worse okay i'm gonna go do that and i'm gonna say it the whatever she's like yeah. everything she says she says wrong she just like has a little bit too much drama for me sometimes i'm just like i need to like that skip over the me. scene because i just can't deal with the drama that you're bringing to the table it's like too much and then Jamie like I understand he's not the best but she's so mean to him like she's literally like I'm gonna kill you like did you I do you guys can. follow that like Taylor Grayson girl on TikTok or Instagram no I don't know who that is she does like she started doing like reenactments from um what's it called succession and so she does like reenactments of like all these like popular TV shows. She did like Bear. I need to watch that Wait, too. was it the one? Was she like by? It was like the horses are paid actors, and it was yes. like her being bad. Yeah. I sent that to my mom. That was so funny. <laughs> she does like amazing reenactments. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, I just watched done her other videos because that yeah. was hilarious. And like she's started doing a lot of like pop TV shows. But this is like so cool to me, where like creators are like replacing celebrities in some way like she goes to like paramount plus like premieres and that's cool all of these things because um, people will want her to make these videos about their shows yeah I which is like just that. like i really one of my goals is to like incorporate more like pop culture things into my content and be posting about that more because like it's such a big part of my life is tv yeah. and movies yeah like, i love that so i don't know why i don't talk about it more you definitely should. There's another. There's a girl, uh, Jess, Jess, and yes, I literally she was just gonna pop say culture her. queen. Yes. <laughs> I love her. I don't. I don't know anything. Like you know, I'm not. I'm very disconnected from the pop pop culture world. But I look to her stuff, and I like enjoy catching up on things. Same. Like she posts a bunch about Real Housewives and stuff, and I don't yeah. even watch any of the Real yeah. Housewives. But like, I still enjoy her talking about it. I. Uh, this is like very. This is gonna be weird that I'm bringing this up. Are you guys watching Bachelorette? Bachelor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Unfortunately. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to well, stick to recaps. There's we were all so girl. bored last night. Did you watch it? Victor- How is Victoria? Because yeah. Victoria is like on – I've i been following her for like two years now. Oh, that's crazy. Um, and I was so excited to see. But she was like married when I first started following her and then she got divorced. Oh, the influencer then, on the show? Mm-hmm. And she's oh. a makeup artist and influencer. Yeah. Wait, so did you watch Brittany or you're not? No, I haven't. I'm going to watch like now that it's uh, up. At least the first I think episode. Until she gets this year, off. then maybe I need to. I think the girls are really going to stand out this year because the Bachelor himself is so boring and shitty. I feel like that's what happened with like Chris Soul's season, where Becca and Caitlin came out of that season and as JoJo. such strong. Yeah. Wait, well, no, was she, was I born? had I had that same conversation with my sisters last night. JoJo was not in that season. Oh, JoJo has been. Yeah. Yeah. It's because Becca was came back. Yeah, but I feel like maybe the girls are going to have to step it up and yeah. Yeah, yeah I've already listened to two so recaps boring. of it and like just even the recaps were like not that interesting. Yeah, he oh God. What recaps are you listening like to? Um, Chicks in the Office, Nick Vile. Those are my favorite ones. Does he cover every like season? Yeah. Nick Vile. Yeah. I would be interested to hear his recap. They're really good. Andy has like a guest on always. That is cool. Usually a how reality many TV person. Out, how many episodes does he put out a week? Three, sometimes four. What? And I'd so be he must not into edit. every single one. <laughs> no, he definitely does not edit his own. What podcast thing is he part of? Um, now he's on his own. Uh, oh. They just he just separated and got his own studio and stuff. But he was. With iHeart. iHeart. It wasn't iHeart or Dear Media. If iHeart came to us and wanted to work with us, (laughs) you would turn them down. (laughs) Yeah. I do not. I hate how I hate the ads that they run. Oh, same. Uh And I just hate that it's affiliated with radio. Like, I don't like radio. I want to be in a streaming platform. Like, I just, I don't like iHeart. And everybody yeah. with iHeart, it annoys me. Yeah, I feel that. Oh, also, um, we played this game this weekend oh, on yeah, that the iPad. Cool. It's really fun. It's like such a good alternative instead of like watching TV at night because there's like episodes. Um, but it's this iPad game and it's called Scriptic by Netflix. And there's also a Scriptic app that's not by Netflix. So I'm not sure if that one's like similar and maybe just as fun. But we did the by Netflix one and you like there's like a victim and you have their phone and you like get to go through the victim's phone and then you like interview suspects and like it's so cool. And you just go episode by episode until I think there's like 10 episodes per case. That sounds really fun. That is interesting. I want to try it. It was just a fun alternative to watching TV. This is so interesting that there's like all these like new styles of like shows and things coming out. Like Kaleidoscope is such an interesting thing and then this what did you call it again uh scriptic scriptic yeah that is interesting. also like they're starting to do audio shows again too like like a podcast but it's a show and there's like voice actors and stuff and like how back in the day before tv people would just listen to radio shows with like plots and stuff yeah wait what do you mean like it's like podcasts but they're like scripted like, or it's like a TV show, but no TV. It's all audio. And oh. they're actors, but it's just their voices. That is interesting. Did you listen to one yeah. of these po- uh, podcasts that's by like three comedians? Smart and they one. always do like, <laughs> I don't know, Comedy Bang no. Bang, I think it's called. No. <laughs> uh, but they do like basically skits like every single show. And mm. a lot of it's improv just because, like, they're sounds comedians. Sounds fun. You'd probably like it. I hate it, but <laughs> <laughs> I, like, can't listen to it. <laughs> when we go on, like, our drives and I'm, like, reading or, like, trying to do something else, I'm like, I need you to put headphones in. I can't really listen to Can you to read this. while you drive? Yeah. Oh, I get In the so front sick. seat. Me too. In the back seat, I don't. Yeah. Or I do get car sick in the back seat, but in the front Dang. seat, I don't. 
What a fine line. Like, it, I can't read anywhere in the car. But, yeah, like, same. to be able to read in the front but not the back is interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's same thing, like, with Ubers. Like, I have to take, like, Comfort or, like, Uber XL or Uber Black or whatever because the drivers are just better and, like, mm. professional. And, like, I get car sick if I look that at my phone so in the back of, like, an Uber. Like, to be prone to car sickness but also be able to read. <laughs> <laughs> but the, like, you're those prone to car sickness sometimes. The ones with the liquid in it, mm-hmm. I have a pair, but I haven't tried reading. I feel like it's just placebo. Yeah, I don't know if it would really? work that well. I mean, I don't think it's placebo, but I don't know if it if it would actually be that effective. Yeah, like semi effective, but not fully to where I can read. Can you look at your phone in the car, like if you're not driving? for a short period of time same like i can't like edit a video or like stare at it for yeah a long time. yeah i don't i'm that's a very curious thing i want to like look up why i can't i don't really get car sick in the front seat well that's I like get. a common thing like my family like my oh, really? i feel like it's an excuse like my brother would all it's not an excuse it might be real but like my brother would always get to sit in the front seat because he got car sick <laughs> and yeah. i'd have to sit in the back middle because i didn't get car sick <laughs> that's because you're the baby right yeah (laughs) shove me in the middle we used to get we used to like just get in so many arguments about the middle seat and like who had to take it yeah i remember who had a family feud episode your mind went right to fighting in the car (laughs) yeah that's true (laughs) i never want something your parents would not want you to do in the car in their fight (laughs) (laughs) i love it (laughs) okay so should we dive into this quiz (laughs) yeah and figure more about our personality maybe we can like understand why those were my answers (laughs) maybe this quiz is all about like motion sickness in the car maybe (laughs) okay so each so it gives us a statement and then we rate each statement from a scale of one to five (laughs) my favorite (laughs) <laughs> to, to to see how true it is to us um okay. so five is agree one is disagree who wants to start I is can. everyone's first question the same i'm a perfectionist yeah yes so number one i am a perfectionist how strongly i think I i'm four. gonna say three okay why do you think four well here's the thing that like I feel like I'm not necessarily a perfectionist, but then my behavior tends to, like, align with perfectionism behavior. Like, you don't need everything to be perfect, but, like, for me, I don't need things to be perfect. Like, I want it to be done and good enough, and that's fine, but, like, I never think I'm good enough. Yeah. This is, is in that this question kind of always stumps oh, me because I... I think, like, my overall goal is always, like, perfectionism, but, like, I'm similar to you where I don't need things to be perfect before I put them out. Yeah. I was going to say five. Really? I I would. That's why it took you four hours to edit a 30-second video? Yeah. And, like, (laughs) it obviously is never going to be perfect. Like, even once I finish it, I don't think, like, oh, this was perfect, but it's just the best that I could get, and I know, like, that's not perfect, and then I feel upset that it's not perfect. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of perfectionist behavior, this is why like one of the things I am like thinking about is like you pre- you prevent yourself from like moving forward because you want it to be at a certain caliber. Yes. And yeah. so there's a lot of things that like I'll do, but like I have trouble like completing them because of this like perfectionism. Yeah, same. And I procrastinate so much of things that I want to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know if I'm a three or a four because I've never identified as a perfectionist, but like, neither did I. Lately, I've been just like, you know, beating myself up for not doing enough. Probably I feel like that's a perfectionist tendency. But if you. Yeah, I think I'll stick with three. Yeah. Wait, Maggie, you're doing five? I feel like. Unless, what's like a five? Would I be four, maybe? I just think think you're you're not a five because, but like, the five perfectionists are the ones who don't 
start anything because I never think good I enough was to post. a five and then maybe now I'm like a four because I got like oh I just you you just can't function if you live like that almost because you're right like you don't end up putting anything out yeah okay I'll say four okay okay next one my relationships with others are what my life is about I feel pretty strongly about that. Define, okay, so like your relationship with others. So like the bond type, not like your relationship to how people perceive you or whatever. No, like your relationships. Like Um, how, maybe like how important relationships are. I mean, I (laughs) I probably want to say five. I think I'll say four. I mean, guess I don't have, I'm not like the type of person that needs a million relationships with people. But, like, I really care about the the small group of people that I have relationships with. Okay, you no. keep convincing me every time to lower mine. <laughs> like, uh, sorry. I feel <laughs> like we should go with your gut instinct. Yeah, I feel like this is gut better if it's gut. Okay. <laughs> I put work first. Wait, what did you put? What did you give us oh, five I, for relationship? I did four. I did four. What if you did five for every single thing? What would your personality type be? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I put work first. How do you guys feel about this? I'm going to do four. I'm going to do two. <laughs> I think I should maybe do three. I just think, obviously, I actually, you know what, a lot like on vacations and stuff, I think that I'm going to go into this vacation working and doing so many videos and stuff. And then I put it aside and don't do it at all. Yeah, so I, I I'm, I'm doing two. Like three. I, no matter what it is in my life, I put the most important things last because they mean more to me and because yeah. I want them to be perfect. But then it always goes last. What about you, Brett? Sorry, <laughs> she's chewing. <laughs> I had some cereal right before this. It was pretty dang. Um, I, had, oh, I did four. I feel like at this season, I'm like this season of my life, especially work is just uh, top like priority, priority and yeah. focus. I daydream about being in love. Definitely four. I am five. I love love. <laughs> I'm probably a two. Really? Like, you don't if, feel like, like you don't. If I'm watching like a a rom com or something, then I'm like, oh, that's nice. But like, other than that, <laughs> I, I guess of- mine is more like I, I've always like daydreamed about me in the future. Like, I always like picture me as like a 45 year old woman with children mm-hmm. and like being in love and having a family and living on a farm and having a cow mm. <laughs> a cow that'll be so cute but i follow yeah. this girl who lives in new zealand and has sheep and they are so cute that's adorable that is really cute i have a hard time showing emotions one <laughs> i'd be showing all my emotions I'm going to do three because I, with certain people, I'm, like, very vulnerable. But, like, for a lot of people, I, like, have trouble sharing the full Mm -hmm. spectrum. I feel like I might be a four because I'm very avoidant. Like, I don't want to feel my emotions, so, I like, I avoid it. Would you guys take that to mean showing your emotions as like really expressing your feelings and how you feel about certain things or like you can cry or be happy or do whatever True. emotion you're feeling in front of other people because this isn't negative emotions yeah because like it i have like, like i'm fine with crying in front of like i just have emotion very easily but like you're saying Britt, i wouldn't like just up front tell every single person like share my deepest feelings like it's hard for me to talk about my feelings in person with a lot of people yeah i think showing is just like the outward expression like i'm i feel a lot of things but i don't show yeah i feel like i'm gonna say two i have a hard time if 
I think I'm gonna say three. Am I just like a basic bitch? Like <laughs> so freaking average. I'm just gonna be in the middle for everything. I need something that sparks some passion within me. Yeah. <laughs> this one could be a good one. Fear of being taken advantage of keeps me from being more trusting. Hmm. Mm. Honestly, too. How often I feel like this doesn't really come up for me that much in my life, so I guess I'd be low as well. I am in the middle on that one. Yeah, I'm going to do two. I like it's very easy for me to trust people. Like I just automatically give like my trust to anybody <laughs> until they yeah. break it. Yeah. I feel but like, like I default to that, but like I also have been become more like observant of certain things where like I do become a little weary sometimes. Yeah, I think I trust people pretty easily. I trusted you guys to start a freaking podcast and we never never met in person. That's literally so true. <laughs> okay, I must always be having new experiences. One. Mm. That's hard because I like to live my life the same way, but I do like having new experiences. Like, I would get bored. Like, I need to do a new vacation every year at least or, like, yeah. go somewhere new or, like, do something. Yeah, I it makes you newness. feel good. I need to yeah. try different things, meet new people. But I'm I gonna trust always. I'm going to say three, I guess. Because I, I think if I had it my of, way. I get scared to do new things. Even though I feel good afterwards, it like scares me to Same. go into the unknown. What were you going to say, Britt? I just, if I had it like my ideal way, I would like be doing something new or like shifting things around every month but it's not always realistic what number did you do i have four okay i naturally emerge as a leader mm. i'm gonna go with five I'm going to go with four. I feel like, like, in with any group project or anything, I usually, like, <laughs> just, you know, I can't let go of control. So, usually I was mm -hmm. the one was doing every school group do. project and everything. I feel like I always have good ideas and a good plan, but my shyness kind of prevents me or prevented me in school from emerging as a leader. So, yeah. I would let people take control. But, like, if I'm with people, if I'm with my family... Like, I'm the leader of my family over my mom. Like, I'm the one who takes charge and, like, oh, plans things and makes decisions. So, like, that's weird. I guess as my true self, if I wasn't afraid yeah. of people, then, yes, I emerge as a leader. That's weird, right. though, because, like, in my family, I take a more backseat. Like, I'm I wish like, I could. <laughs> well, I feel like leadership and control are not necessarily synonymous. Like, it's – leadership is, like, wanting to guide and, like – direct and like orchestrate like how things go you know what I mean so it could be like and that could be something that you do more of even if you're shy like and you don't necessarily like put it out there for people mm -hmm. you might like have that natural tendency to be a leader yeah, yeah, like when I did group projects as a kid, it would be like, I wouldn't really talk. Like, you know, when you all meet, like, and you have to mm -hmm. meet in the classroom and you're at like a table together, <laughs> yeah. I, that would be so uncomfortable for me. Like, I hated, like, I was too shy to talk then, and everyone would just be messing around and talking about random other things. And then at when we'd go home, then I'd have to take control of everything and get all the yeah. work done. But like in the situations where you're like in public, like in person together, I couldn't speak up and be a leader like then. Yeah. Yeah. And if I were given the option to be the leader, I would take it. Like, I want to be the leader, but like, sometimes I don't have the voice to step up and do it. Or if I have a boss that's telling me yeah, you know, that I can't or whatever. I feel like what defines like a leader or like a good leader isn't necessarily what like people put into leadership positions. So I feel like we don't True. always have like a really good representation of like who a leader should be. Like, like you were saying, like a lot of leaders are outgoing or they like are more extroverted but like 
those people don't necessarily always make the best leaders, but you don't mm-hmm. often see like more shy, introverted person who's like more reserved and only like says things that are going to provide value and stuff. So yeah, hopefully that'll keep changing as like more people have the opportunity to like be their own bosses and create their own businesses and stuff. But I think a lot of people are put into leadership positions wrongly. Yeah, I agree. Like that book, Quiet, that was all about like the disservice we've done to quiet people because we value it's cute. loud extrovert people yeah. in our society. I I always hated that too. I think I've said this before, but like my sister's very introverted and like really enjoyed her alone time. But like I was very outgoing and like always wanted to be with people and like always wanted to have friends over and like be connected with people. And she was always looking to me and being like, oh, I'm wrong because of like what I'm doing. Mm. And like yeah. over time we figured it out and like it's been better, but it's like I wish that she didn't grow up like thinking that. Yeah. Uh, when other people are arguing, I leave the room. I don't like arguing. I it leave depends. the room. Five. I hate um, conflict. If it's like strangers, not leaving the room. I'm <laughs> listening intensely. If it's like anybody I know, I'd probably leave the room. But like as a kid, when like your friends' parents are fighting, I was kind of into that. I like I like the drama. <laughs> Oh my god, I hate being around it. Like I like watching it on TV or whatever. But I hate like, watching it on TV. Person. Really? Yeah, that's why I don't watch a lot of reality TV, especially like old school reality TV, which was like all drama and fighting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I hate arguing like myself. Like it gives me the biggest stomach pit to be in any kind of argument. But like I like other people's drama. I strive for efficiency. I'm five on that. I hate doing things inefficiently it is probably like one of the most like energy draining things for me what am i don't we all strive for efficiency right (laughs) also i hate doing things that don't make sense to my brain you know like yeah why am i going to do this task if it's not even going to make a difference in anything yeah i feel like there are people though that like don't really give a fuck they'll like do something the hard way or long way Yeah, I used to be very inefficient. Like, I was not good at thinking, like, planning ahead in my – I don't know, maybe if that's ADHD or something. But, like, I couldn't plan ahead of all the tasks I'd have to do and, like, what would be the best order to do that. Like, if, say, I have to grab things from, like, multiple rooms and I'd pass a room and it would make more sense to grab the first thing than go finish the first task and come back and do the second thing. Like, I was not good at that in my brain. But being a server really helped me with that because, like, Mm. you have to, like, you just learn, oh, it would be faster to get this person their drink before I take this order rather than, like, going back and forth and back and forth a million times. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's, like, helped me now in life. But I'm not efficient Mm. with work, I don't think, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) Considering my I strive to be efficient, but I'm not necessarily 100% efficient all the time. But, like, I – you want that is my ideal yeah Yeah. i'm gonna say four i feel like because i i strive i'm just not there (laughs) what are you saying brit i'm saying five five i like i shut down when shit is like not efficient i like don't want to deal with it i feel all Um, right i have (laughs) (laughs) i have difficulty saying no I don't really too. I do. I'll tell you what though. I hate being told no. (laughs) I don't know if I'm a four or five. Like I, I'm probably a five. I'm so bad at saying no. If I can do it over like a text, then that's easier. But like face to face, I cannot. And like, I feel like I always have to have like such a good excuse if I'm ever saying no, like it's where I have to have this whole yeah. backstory that gives like a logical good reasoning of why I have to say no in order yeah. to like please that person. Yeah. Wait, so what number did you say, Britt? Two. I like to stand out. This is where, like, doing it by myself, I would be like, I'm a three. But, like, 
keeping myself honest, I'm definitely like four or five and I don't know which one I should do. It's interesting though, like it really depends on the circumstance. Cause like if I'm yeah, just in too. public, I'm not trying to stand no, out. Like I don't so want to wear an outfit that everybody stares at. No. I don't want to stand out in a place, but like in your mysteriously, community. Seriously, I do want to stand out. Like I do mm-hmm. want people to be looking at me in public and be like, oh, her outfit's really cute. Or like Me too. Or like I love when I'm like like we went to this bar <laughs> when our friends were here and it was like this like country bar and it was just very like it was just like kind of a dive bar and like not kind of just trashy and me and my friend were there and we were dressed like all cute and we were like damn we really feel like the two hottest girls in this entire place like I do (laughs) like that feeling (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. also Dev is that an Aspen sweater yeah (laughs) I'm obsessed where is it from Abercrombie oh they have such good sweatshirts ski patrol that's very cute. That's cute. Thanks. Do you get PR from them yet? No. It'll happen. That'd be nice. So what are you are you doing four or five? I'm doing four. Yeah, I think I'm doing four. Cause like, yeah, every time if I go to a friend or family event, I always want to be like the one that looks the cutest. Like I want everybody to be like, oh, she has cool style. Yeah, but like in a quiet, mysterious way. Yes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I um, I really enjoy feeling bittersweet. That's a very strange question. I'm a five what for this one. What does that even mean? I love bitter. Like to me, I, this means like nostalgia almost. Like I love the feeling of like I'm looking up the definition when me something's too. like good, but then also sad. Like it's like feeling be- bittersweet about like missing something but also it was like good times i don't know it reminds me of nostalgia what's the deck dif- de- oh my god pleasant, but including <laughs> or marked by elements of suffering or regret uh, yeah i think i like yeah. bittersweet but i'd probably i think i would be like two i don't know if i like feeling it no i don't think i like go out it makes of my me way feel to try weird and, like, yeah it makes me feel kind of more sad at the end of the me day me too i think i'm gonna two it makes me depressed and think about how life is so short and one day we'll yeah. all be dead. But then doesn't that. that also give you the feeling of like feeling no. so thankful for life kind of at the no. same time? Like that's why no. I like the bittersweet. <laughs> okay, I, I'm clearly a four. <laughs> um, I spend hours alone with my hobbies. Five. <laughs> yeah, five. I don't really like to My hobby is scrolling alone. on TikTok. I like doing things. Well, like, does with Joe count? Yeah. Maybe like, no. Is that I don't know. Is it, it like alone? Listening? You're no, not an introvert, be... so I wouldn't say hi on the scale for you. I think the only thing I'd spend hours by myself is reading. I think I do too. Um, I get input from others before I make a decision. Always, but I don't necessarily take their advice. You know, like when you ask for input, sometimes you just want validation. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes you that makes what? you realize that you want you what you actually want. Yeah. That's why, like, I will go to specific people for specific things because I know <laughs> that they'll validate me with that decision. Yeah. Like, yeah. What we've been doing recently is, like, We'll have to make me and Joe have to like make a decision, and then we like pull out that like, it just like Google has like a heads or tails thing, and like <sighs> before like while Joe's pulling it out, I make a decision. I'm like, no, uh, I want this, because you know like, have you ever heard that before? Like where you like go to flip a coin and you'll know your decision. No, I've never heard that. Well, well, like, if, if you flip a coin, if you're like, do you want to do this or that, and then you put like heads or tails, and like while it's up in the air. You'll be like, oh, I really, really hope it's heads or I like really, really hope it's tails. That makes sense. That's like when you pick a food place and you're like, okay, pick which one. And then if you're disappointed with the one that they pick, then you know that you want the other one. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm also That's very funny. decisive. So I'm I thinking think two three. or three. I'm going to say three, I think. I definitely get input, but I'm like you, Deb, where I like, well, st- I know what my decision is going to be most of the time. And it also depends like what 
the decision or what, like, is it, am I quitting my job or am I buying this for dinner? Like, it depends what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just do three. I can keep a conversation going with anyone about anything. Five. One. Two. <laughs> you had to talk to a brick I, wall. Like, it's really my, like, <laughs> most uncomfortable feeling of, like, when you're having a conversation with somebody and you know, like, there's just any silence or I'm just always thinking about what's the next thing that I'm mm-hmm. going to say to like try to make this flow and sound like a good conversation yeah me too i also feel so awkward asking people questions for some reason yeah same but that's also like my go-to i guess like that's kind of the easiest way for me to make conversation is i do just ask people questions actually yeah i don't know why i'm afraid about themselves true yeah Yeah. i like a conversation where no one agrees i do not like that you like that I like debates, but it gets frustrating when you can't, like, (laughs) make people see your side. I hate being misunderstood. Okay, I took this to mean I'm not in the conversation. (laughs) If I'm in the conversation, I feel like this is, like, in the conversation. Okay, if I'm in the conversation, then more like a four or a three. Because I do love debating, like, especially about politics or anything. Like, I love watching people debate i love people talking about it i love hearing every side of every spectrum and like i love that so much that's like so surprising about you i really like having conversations with people who all agree with me so (laughs) (laughs) i think i'm gonna do it too i like yeah i think i'm gonna i do like having someone on my side though you know like it's nice to have somebody to back you up yeah I grew up with my dad and grandpa agreeing, I mean, disagreeing on extremes about politics and stuff. And they would get into fights at dinner where my dad would make my sister and I leave with him during dinner. Like, oh, that's like very intense. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I didn't ever like experience that growing up. So to me, it's not like as like of a serious thing. But if it was like that, I would hate that. Yeah. Yeah, I just think of arguments, like yeah. people getting heated with each other about stupid shit. Okay, I'm going to say three then. <laughs> um, I keep my thoughts to myself to prevent trouble. I'm good at do- I hate when people are like, they can't keep their mouth shut. Because like, let's say you're having a conversation with someone who <laughs> loves Donald Trump and you know you're not going to change your mind, but then there's that person who has to say something that you know they know is going to trigger this person. Yeah. That's probably me. Huh. Yeah. You would? I love providing my – I love giving my two cents. Uh, I just feel like all of these are so situational. Like on social media, I do not keep my thoughts to myself. Like sometimes when I see people post about – they're like scared to post about something because it might be controversial or something. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I didn't even realize that was controversial. Like I'm totally fine with social media-wise. But like you're saying in person, I'm good at keeping like little thoughts or annoyances to myself to not like create arguments. Yeah. I'm going to say four because I mostly keep my thoughts to myself. Also, I'm quiet, so I don't <laughs> – What are you saying, Britt? Um, I'm gonna say four. I there's definitely situations where I don't give my two cents. Uh, but also in fights with Cameron and stuff, I am kind of bad at that sometimes. I feel like I've gotten way better. I'm gonna say three. I often have to redo other people's work. I will be the one redoing other people's work if it needs to be done because I'd rather do that than like upset them by saying like you did this wrong. Can you fix this? Oh, interesting. I think I'm in the middle. What I've learned about myself, like, with having my team is that, like, once I explain how I want something done, then it's really easy for people to, like, follow it. But sometimes I'm not very clear about that at first. Mm, and yeah, so I, like, redo it. Part. But, like, my my thing now is to, like, explain it more thoroughly so that it doesn't have to be redone. 
I feel like with work specifically, like I don't feel the need to read it, even if it's not to the level of what I would have done or what I had in mind. Like I don't feel the need at all. And you guys are kind of really the only, I like the only work that I'm having with other people. And I feel like I like fully trust everything you guys do and like know it'll be even better than what I was thinking. So I don't do that in work wise. But like maybe cleaning or something. Like if it's yes. Like oh my the god. <laughs> I re I fix my sister's cleaning. Also, I'll like if I don't like the shape of my nails, I'll go home and like f- try to fix them myself. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna tell the lady or man that I to change the shape or whatever, or that I don't like this little part. Okay, I definitely often redo other people's Same. work. <laughs> I got my makeup done for prom, and I went home and fully took it off and redid it myself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So obviously that's a thing of not being able to either convey your vision well enough or yeah. ask for someone to change it. I feel like more people, like nail people and hair people, should like not give their two cents about what they think it looks like for you and like give you the time and space to be like, how do you feel about this? Or like rate it on a scale they of like one to ten. Yeah, I would say – I love it. <laughs> but normally they're like – they're excited and they're like, oh my god, this is – like you can tell that they're like, yeah. this – I'm proud of my work here. Mm-hmm. And like while they might have done what you th- they thought you wanted, I think if they gave you like two more seconds to just like be like – I don't know. Maybe having them rate on like a scale of one to ten and you were like six, then they'd be like, oh – what do I need to do differently? That makes me want to throw up. I could never tell anybody hmm. that they did a six on my nails. Or, or I know, I'm like, but like, even I feel like if you said seven, which I feel like is not horrible, that's almost worse. <laughs> but I don't think like, they care. They want to get well, in the nails, anyways. They're like, I want to get done and move on. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to put. I think I'm just gonna do three. I did yeah, four. It just depends on the circumstance. <laughs> this is hard. I get lots of satisfaction from helping other others achieve their goals. Five. That's my hope. I'm probably a three. Mm. I'm probably four, I think. <laughs> Less goals, more like when I give people advice or something and then they yeah. act on it and then I get worked for that. I'm like, hell yeah, I fucking told you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It is good to wake up to a full day of planned activities. One. <laughs> what? I feel like I was literally going to say five for you. You love a planned, like, structured life. No, yeah. I don't love that. What? That's why but you for plan my birthday, ahead. No, I love plans, but I don't love waking up to a full day of plans. Like, that's why for my birthday, I just wanted to have no plans and just do whatever I felt like. Like, I'm doing two social activities this weekend, guys, and I'm, like, stressed about it to have one thing on Saturday and one thing on Sunday. But what if it's, like, go get your nails done, take the dogs to the park, read a book? Oh, well, those are, like, fun plans, I guess. Those are individual plans if it's social plans that's different i would have a hard time sticking to a whole day plan like i think i would get behind and i wouldn't be able to do everything like read for an hour like i would i would read for a long like it just wouldn't work for my brain i think yeah i'm I definitely love being on middle. vacation with a whole day of plans though that's fun yeah i like a few plans but not like too many plans and I'm getting better at it, but, like, planning too far ahead just gives me anxiety. Yeah. And deciding on plans ahead of time. So I'm doing three. I think I'm going to do a two. Same. <laughs> I cry is the next one. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Five. <laughs> I do be crying. I. How often do you think you guys cry? Like, just – like tear up like one single tear fall at least i think four three to four times a week probably same i don't think i cry enough i cry like songs and movies and tv shows will make me cry more than like i'll cry about my own life 
<laughs> Rosie yeah, the same. other day <laughs> looked back at me and I went, like almost just broke down. That was like the like welling up because she like looked back. Her ears were like flapping and her little chop was out and her little teeth were oh. out. And I was just like, I love you. <laughs> How do we deserve you? Yeah. Uh, yeah Maybe I'm I a three because my best friend cannot cry. She never cries. Like, and she That's wants crazy. to cry and she can't. So I guess I'm not it's like, like the holiday. Like yeah. Yes. I'm probably I wish I could middle. like turn it off. I literally, when I was on Lexapro, I did not cry. Like it was the weirdest thing because I was so emotional. Like to then it's like almost like turning off a switch. Like I could no longer happy cry. That's like I could weird. only cry if I was like feeling really intense sadness. Like rarely. I cry when I'm like angry or frustrated. In addition to feeling sad or like really really happy, yeah, I do too. Also, frustration is probably frustration one crying of the top and reasons I cry. Actually, I also cry out of like shame mm-hmm. or Same. when I, the misunderstanding will get me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mostly TikTok. Honestly, like I'd be crying <laughs> at other people's lives. I avoid sad to t- t- sad TikToks. Yeah, same. I like tell them I'm not I interested. <laughs> I I watch all of them all the time. He's like, give me everything. more. <laughs> and then oh. I send them to Cameron, and we watch our TikToks together, like every few weeks or something. And like he knows, like it's always obvious if the dog's gonna die in the TikTok or something. Oh my god! And he's like, no, no. Or like sometimes <laughs> he'll watch them, and then we're both just like bawling. <laughs> oh no, because I then I'll think about my own life. Yeah, and I don't want to think about that. That's the bittersweet, though. Mm, yep, I hate zero. <laughs> uh, I spend most of my time trying to understand things. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I just want to do it. Try. I think to understand four things. What does that mean? I love. I love if I like. Am I, if I like don't understand something, I'll Google it and like try and like dive into it and like figure it out or like. I love like learning and I just want to like, do it. I don't have the attention span. Like when we started recording on Riverside, I found their YouTube channel and I was like, oh, I'm going to watch all these videos, like learn. I couldn't even pay attention to one video. Like I, I just want to get in and record and figure it out. I don't want to spend yeah. time trying to understand. I guess it's also I mean, a lot of things that I care about. Like if I care about it a lot, like I spend a lot more time doing it, but. I, don't know. I guess understanding I mean, could mean getting in and doing no, no. Even with like photography, I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing. I just do it. Yeah, I just, I just like to do. do. So we're so good at it. I couldn't tell you like what settings you need to use or any of that. Do you stuff. shoot in manual? What? Do you shoot manual? Yeah. But like, I just so flip switches up. Like, I just you just I figure it out. Yeah. That's crazy. Does it mean like under like I <laughs> like understanding life is like I, I feel like know. broadly like do you do you have a care to like understand something like what Devin's saying I'm the same way like I won't watch tutorials or whatever I prefer to just like do something but like when I, it's something I'm interested in of like if I watch a movie and then I want to watch all the like background interviews and do deep research on the characters and like but I feel like that's different. Yeah. I'm going to say three. I'm getting too many threes, guys. I'm very <laughs> Basic bitch. I conform. Uh, Is that you? I- <laughs> <laughs> that's the next one. I conform. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's hard. These are all so hard. I think with certain things I do, but I feel like I default to not conforming. Like, I have a really hard time, like, if someone has a different, like – opinion and it's just like a light social conversation i can't really like fake enjoying something yeah yeah hmm. i'm gonna say four but i don't know no i like cannot compromise like to me compromising is like you deciding to do what i want to do <laughs> like, yeah it's very hard for me to compromise what to do that what the other person wants yeah or like i won't be happy about it but i'll but i will do it I do conform because, like, I'm a people pleaser and I just want everybody else to be happy and then I'll be happy. when you put it like that. (laughs) This is so hard. I don't know. Three or four for me. 
feel like I'm pretty much a basic bitch, so probably like a four. <laughs> Look at your headphones. What? I'm going to say two. I spent, I, I have really expensive headphones so that I could be like everyone else. <laughs> I am uninhibited. Um, what de- what definition are we I just for looked this? it up. <laughs> Expressing one's feelings or thoughts unselfconsciously and without restraint. Okay, oh, I'm always self conscious. Oh, I say I'm wait, like three, see, three. This is why. But this is why they <laughs> like the Enneagram test. Definitely like ch- like ask similar questions in a different way to like help you find the true meaning. I just feel like I could take this test on social media or in real life and it would be completely different Mm. answers like i am uninhibited in person i will not say things i am not like i'm very cautious i'm worried about what i say i overthink everything i'm going to say online not uninhibited whatsoever wait if you're no you did the opposite you online yourself you're not uninhibited you i thought uninhibited means you do whatever you say whatever yeah so, so you're am. willing to say whatever in person? No, on social media. So you're uninhibited online and you're yeah. not uninhibited in person. Yeah. So like I feel like all of these questions are like that. I think I'm a two. I'm, I'm a more three uninhibited when I am drinking alcohol. Mm-hmm. Same. But I need alcohol to like release my inhibitions <laughs> so that I can Release really like my inhibitions <laughs> via the rain on your flowers. Oh, what a jam. Uh, I want people to tell me the truth and not spare my feelings. I'm a three on that. I need you to spare some of my feelings. I'm too yeah. sensitive. Maybe I'm more of a four. I think I'm a two. I think I'm a four. I like I take I'd things too personal. Do you think, though, then if people are lying to you? Like, do you question then? Yeah. Because that's what I don't like. Like, I don't like – I don't want to question what they're saying. I'd rather you just be, like, straight up. Yeah, that's true. But, like, my little brain can't handle it. Yeah. I'm probably more – I'm, like, very in between two and three, but I think I'm going to go three. Because – I, I feel like I can sense when people are lying. So I'm like, no, tell me the truth. Exactly. So it's yeah. like, but I'm also like, but yeah. be nice about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm very flexible and accepting. Five. <laughs> I think I'm a two. I think I'm a two. Or three. See, like, what? <laughs> I feel like you have to go with your gut feeling. Because if but you like- overthink it too much, then. I think it's like manipulating the test. But what does this mean? I'm acceptive of people and flexible. No, like, you want? like I feel like it's flexible and accepting of situations. Okay, then I am hate that one. <laughs> I keep my belongings in order. Two. I'm not very organized. Agree, but I'll say a four because I'm not like that crazy. Yeah, I say four also. I put my family first. Agree. I think three or four. Yeah, I feel like I want I think to, it's but hard I don't always. Yeah. Being so far away from them. Yeah. Yeah, I did a five. <laughs> yeah. Money is important to my happiness. Yes. Yeah. I side with rebels over the establishment. Wait, whoa, you're going so fast. Uh, (laughs) I think two. Yeah. Okay, wait. I side with rebels over the... On the money part. Money, I need enough to survive, but once I'm there, I don't think that there's, like, like, it really contributes to my happiness. I think it's fun making and spending money. money, so, Yeah. But do you think that it, like, contribute, like, really contributes to your happiness? Like, do you think that you wouldn't be able to be happy if you didn't make as much money? I think I'd still be harder. happy, but I 
get a lot of happiness out of spending money and like making a lot of money. Yeah. Like being able to like do more things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hate how society makes liking money a bad bad. Like we all like money. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think maybe I have like, I get like guilt feelings if I'm spending a bunch of money and stuff. Yeah. But I do like spending money (laughs) and shopping. Yeah. Okay. I side with the rebels over the establishment. Mm. I think too. I very much follow the rules. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Um, I like mental challenges. I very I four for that one. I get bored. I feel like I realized I didn't. I like need mental challenges when I wasn't being mentally challenged because I was so bored and like unmotivated. Yeah, when I'm like I challenged, I'm I get motivated and like more exciting. I think I'm like a three too. I like being good at things and under like doing things that I understand and know that I do well. Exactly. Like I like a crossword puzzle, but if it's too hard to solve and I would fail it, then I don't like it. Like I want to solve it. (laughs) Yeah. I am loyal. Yeah, I feel like I'm a five. Same. Like I'm saying, I trust everybody just automatically. I always try to break the tension with a good joke. I'm like, not good at jokes. So I don't. But with jokes. humor, like my therapist would get so mad at me for this because like I'll talk about the most serious <laughs> things. I'd be like, like, no, I was suicidal. <laughs> like, yeah. Like and then I immediately joke about it to like make serious things less serious. Yeah. For me, like it'd be sarcasm. Yeah, like I don't want like I'm not like sarcasm jokes, as like, like a coping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll do a three. Just because I'm avoidant. I, don't I think like maybe you do four. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I you are like that. Like you, you don't, you will try to bring tension or something. Yeah, I don't want to sit in the tension or yeah. unhappiness or whatever. Okay, I'll do four. I prefer it when leaders are decisive. Yes. I Five, yes. I cannot handle indecisive people. I avoid confrontation. Five. Five. I would say two. I don't – I feel That's like – strong. It's – well, here's the thing that I've, like, learned is that – you're so you get to be like much more unhappy because you're not like voicing what you want and you're just like or for me I'm speaking for myself I like sit in this like unhappy and anxiety state when I would rather just confront it and like totally. figure out the situation Same. and work through it even yeah. though it's like uncomfy I think and it's not like perfect every time that. but yeah like what you're saying because i'm this like i will also feel so uncomfortable and my stomach hurts and it's like not a good feeling (laughs) whatsoever so i think i've gotten a little better at it or maybe say four my test did not change at all this is exactly what i was expecting okay i'm submitting that was it hey mine did not change either what are you what the do we have to pay to get the full oh no i have never been this wait what are you everyone say I'm a three. I'm a nine. I'm a two. I've never been a nine. I don't know if this is. A... Really? <laughs> yeah, I would have weird. honestly, like, I would have probably guessed a nine for you before. Really? I don't taking know this. these as much. I just know. Like, Isn't nine three. like the caretaker or something? Oh no, the negotiator. That's okay, read your description. The negotiator people with the Enneagram type 9 personality tend to be accepting, optimistic, and adaptive. They generally like peace and avoid conflict. As a type 3, performers um, is likely to be ambitious, charming, and enthusiastic in their behavior. That's very you. Mine says, care- this is number two. Caregiver- caregivers have an innate desire to connect with the world, which drives them toward attending to the needs of others and feeling helpful. Easily perceive and understand the needs of lovers. Seek accept. Seek accept. Oh my god, I cannot talk today. Seek acceptance and love from people. Attend to the needs of those around them. 
repress their own negative emotions, and have a fear of being unwanted or disliked. That's pretty yeah. accurate. Okay, this actually does sound like me. Peacekeepers like to be perceptive to the needs and feelings of those around them with strong ability to adapt to their needs at any given time, prefer small intimate group dynamics, have vibrant inner monologues, adapt to the behavior and energy of people around them, listen patiently to the needs and requests of others. Um, for my behavioral tendencies, it says performers feel most comfortable as a leader is likely to be assertive and to push their teammates towards a successful outcome. Performers' ability to be decisive and to work under pressure are likely to suit them well in stressful situations. That's like very, like, I feel like three totally. fits very well. Yeah. Wow. What I is your, you should um, take this with a friend because this helps. Yeah. <laughs> what does your basic desire say? Feeling valued and respected, being seen as a leader, rapid progress and achievement, external recognition for accomplishments. Hmm. Very accurate. Mine says feeling appreciated and accepted, opportunities to support others, tight knit long term relationships, and verbal recognition, which is true because words of affirmation is my top love language, too. We need to like send these to each other. Yeah. Yeah. So that we know how to like yeah. motivate each other. I, you guys, for basic fears, you're going to laugh at this one. Lots of structure, <laughs> inefficient or slow process. Wait, really? Wait, that's so interesting. That yeah. is. Because what that, that's I just wouldn't have put that with the other personality things. I know, but like, I don't, I think that it's because, I don't know. I have a hard, I, I've always had like such a hard time with that. Damn. <sighs> this is like so deep, my fears. <laughs> What are yours? <laughs> Feeling unwanted or unnecessary? Check. Relational insecurity? Check. External perception of selfishness, which is a very deep one that is so true. Like, I don't want other which people... Which one is it? External perception of selfishness. Like, I don't want other people to view me as being selfish. I want people to look at me as, like, I help others and I'm good to others. But intris intrinsically, a lot of the motivation is because I want to look that way to others. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if my wing is a two. Because and that is a very subconscious. Oh, yeah. This one doesn't do wings. I but... wish this one said your wing. It's um, also unpredictable or negative emotions, which is also I hate. I hate when people start acting wild or just pull negative emotions out of nowhere, or angry or just it's unpredictable. I don't like that. What are your strengths and weak or fears, Devin? Um, strengths, seeing multiple perspectives in a situation, remaining calm and adaptable, supporting and reassuring those around them, mediating conflict, being open-minded and suspending judgment. And then fears are separation and loss, direct conflict, decisions that may require quick or uncomfortable, uncomfortable actions, bringing underlying problems to the surface. That's so interesting. That's so definitely you. When I used to take this before, I would either get two or nine every time. And oh. then I thought I was like a two wing nine. And then I got explained to that your wing has to be the number next to you. Um, oh. I feel like we, this is um, honestly like all of these together, I feel like makes us a really good team. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see what all of them are. And yeah. just like read the basic summary of all of them so that everybody can know what they all are. Have you guys definitely read those, but have you guys listened to um Sleeping at Last, the band wrote songs for each Enneagram number? And no. it's like very accurate. They're called each of the ones. I'll send it in the That's group cute. Chat. All right. So number one is the reformer. They are rational, idealistic, principled, purposeful, self-control, and perfectionistic. Number two is the helper. They are caring, interpersonal, uh, demonstrative, gener generous, people-pleasing, and possessive. I do Number be three possessive. <laughs> is the achiever. They're the success-oriented, pragmatic, adaptive, excelling, driven, image-conscious. Number four is the individualist. They are sensitive, withdrawn, 
expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed, and te- temperamental. I think that one is also the one where they don't want to be like anyone else. Mm. Where they yeah, I also have gotten same. four before. Five is the investigator. They are the intense cerebral type, so they're perceptive, innovative, secretive, I- isolated. So like really smart people who question everything and want to understand everything. Number six is what I usually get. It's the loyalist, and it's committed, security-oriented, engaging, responsible, anxious, and suspicious. That is definitely also me. Interesting. Responsible, anxious, suspicious, security-oriented. <laughs> you think you're yeah, suspicious? Questioning, like, yeah, you just like the anxiety type of, <laughs> Yeah. Number seven, the enthusiast, busy, fun-loving, spontaneous, versatile, distractible, scattered, life of the party, probably. He's a seven. Fun to be around. Likes to, was he a class clown or something? I can, I feel like that would be. A thousand percent. Number eight is the challenger, powerful, dominating, self-confident, decisive, willful, and confrontational. So... Someone that I probably wouldn't want to be friends with. (laughs) And nine is the peacemaker. Easygoing, self-effacing, receptive, reassuring, agreeable, complacent. See, I'm not that easygoing. So that's why I'm questioning this. I would say you're easygoing. I'd say you're easygoing too. You're literally... Yeah, you're yeah, <laughs> you're very easygoing. What do you think you're not easygoing mm-hmm. like in what circumstances? Like with your family maybe? Yeah, maybe I feel like I would be a different one for friendships, for family yeah, and that's for work. Yeah. Interesting. That's so I think that uh Myers Briggs does a breakdown of like all of those, like work relationships, yeah. um mm personal relationships and then like romantic relationships is that why there's so many letters <laughs> it's like each yeah. one is or something yeah each, oh, yeah each sense. i forgot what they all represent but they're like each kind of like part of it what enneagram do you think joe is some sort of introvert um i have to, i don't i haven't have him take all of these <laughs> loyalist Helper, I feel like one or interesting. two, six, and nine sound introverted. So oh, interesting. That was fun. That, that was I'm really interesting. Really yeah. Different. I really like them. I'm a chameleon. I definitely want to take the love language test too for another episode because. Yeah. I feel like we should do a Myers Briggs too. Yeah. Or maybe I want to we do that can one take it on our own and just discuss it just because i feel like that would take a whole forever i think that they're shorter ones for myers briggs i don't i legitimately pulled up the first result so Mm. (laughs) we could see if there's a shorter one if not we can always just dive into it as well like just the results (sighs) yeah let us know what you guys want to listen to do you enjoy this yeah did you take the quiz i'm gonna send you guys my results Ooh, if you're listening, send us a DM or answer if you're listening on Spotify. We always leave a question when you listen on Spotify. There should be like a question underneath that you can always No, answer. go on our Facebook community. Oh, yeah. We'll post oh, wait. A we have to talk what? about that. Oh, yeah. We started a Facebook group um, where we can all like kind of talk about episodes, life, the things you talked like, about in episodes. Yeah, the things you talked about in episodes will be post. We're like we created three guides. So there's an episode guide, there's a book guide for like the books that we've read or like talked about on the episodes, and then like a TV show guide. And as we build the community, we'll like do prompts and stuff so we can like share more of like if other people have like good book recommendations and things. Perfect. But- so we'll post like a poll like talking about this episode and then everyone can comment what their own Enneagrams are and we can post yes. a link to this exact quiz. Yeah, I'm interested if like a lot of our listeners are similar or if it's just like all all the types. Probably the latter. Yeah. Oh, I do wonder. That's very interesting. I wonder if like our ideal audience 
would all be one certain Enneagram, you know, like when we're creating a type of person. Oh, yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. But maybe not though because we are all three different ones. Well, like – Did you guys expect us to be the same? No. I, I we were answering a lot of them similarly, so I am surprised what, at how different they were. I agree. Yeah. I'm excited though for the Facebook community and to be able like, yeah, to talk so, to more of you guys. Yeah, because we just really want to create a community with the podcast and I'll be able to talk about the episodes because we get a lot of people, mostly my mom, who says while she's listening, <laughs> she always wants to like pipe in and talk. So the Facebook group yeah. will be a good opportunity while you're listening to the episode, whatever you want to share, whatever comes to mind. You can pop it in our Facebook group. So that's it linked in our bio, right? On our Instagram. Yep. And is that the best place? We can put it in the it or? Yeah, we can probably we can add it to all the show notes too. Oh yeah. So you could look oh, in the yeah. description also. If you haven't yet, please rate us and leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on TikTok and Instagram. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.